Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Dennis Lewicki and I'm with the Social Planning Council, one of the um, sponsors of the uh, event tonight. I'd like to welcome you all. Uh, the purpose of tonight is to get a better understanding of what the candidates for mayor think about our community and what they would like to do to improve our community. Now, I want to be clear, as we want the candidates to be clear, we're talking about community, not just city. By community, we mean the combination of people, the relationships between the people, the social infrastructure that brings us together, and the environment that gives us food, income, recreation, and warmth. Improving community is more than just fixing potholes, more than just putting pipes in the ground, and more than just putting police on the streets. We want to hear tonight inspiring leadership from our candidates, and I hope that we can also inspire them with our questions and what we're going to do after the election. In particular, we want to know how they are going to include everyone in the development of the community, and how they will... Thank you, Sean. And we want to know how they're going to assure that there's going to be equity and integrity in government. Bravo. The city part of our discussion tonight is where the candidates will talk about how they will assure integrity in how the city operates. Um, we, we want to show how they will make City Hall accessible and responsive to us as citizens. We want to know their plans for improving the capacity of how city services are delivered. Now, we're going to run a very tight process so that there's lots of time for responses to the questions. And in particular, we want to listen for the commitments that the candidates are going to make in terms of community infrastructure, meeting the needs of people and our culture, meeting the needs of our environment. In particular, we'll also want to hear how they're going to make government accessible, accountable, and capable. On what we hear tonight, and what we read about the candidates and from the candidates, and what we hear from our neighbors, colleagues, and friends, we can then make an informed choice of who we will vote for. But remember, the election on the 22nd of October is not the end of the campaign to change Winnipeg. It's only the beginning of the next administration at City Hall, which will depend on all of us and our constant input. If you don't get to the microphone tonight, we will ask you to write out your questions and give them to us. Write them down, including comments and they will be given to the candidates and we will be recording any of the questions and answers and they will be posted on our website tomorrow morning so that everybody can have an opportunity to have their questions put forward and the candidates will be able to respond. In the two hours we've got, we will not be able to hear every candidate talk about every question. Uh, we're also taking notes and those will be posted as well. After tonight, Remember that the most important person in any election is you, the voter, you, the citizen. It's essential that everyone here get out to vote and that we tell others and get them out to vote on the basis of what you're hearing tonight and what the candidates are saying. After this election, with your support and constant input, we will continue to work with the mayor and council and build a city where equity is a consideration in all that is done at City Hall and that integrity is upheld in how we do it. I'd like to hand over now to Sean Cavanaugh, who I think you all know from CBC Television News. And uh, Janet Stewart was to be the moderator tonight, but unfortunately her mother passed away and she couldn't be here tonight, but Sean has stepped in. So I'll hand it over to Sean. Thank you. To the candidates who couldn't be here tonight, uh, Mr. Steve sent his uh, regrets, and Mr. Havixbeck didn't respond to the invitation. You can take that as you wish. Uh, it's a fascinating topic for reporters. We go everywhere in the city. 
from Royalwood to Manitoba Avenue, from Tuxedo to Aikens. And so community is something we see at a lot of different levels, so I'm fascinated to hear what the candidates have to say tonight. Um, I'll give some, some guidelines here. Uh, I'd ask all of you to be direct and stay on time. Longer speeches are disrespectful, I'm told, to those who came here tonight and want to listen. So you're all going to get two minutes to speak on what equity means to you. How will you, as the mayor of the city, create more of an equitable city? And I'm going to draw your names out of a hat as to who goes first. I would ask all of you when we get to the question point. I've been with these folks many times over the last few months. I'd ask you to be respectful because they are, regardless of their politics or what they say, working incredibly hard. Knocking on doors, answering phone calls, staying up late at night. There is no doubt you can question their politics, but do not question their energy and commitment. So when you ask your questions, please ask them respectfully because they deserve that, as you do too. So here we go. I'm going to pull up the fabulous bowl of fun, and we're going to get to it. A two-minute what does equity mean to you, and how will you as mayor of Winnipeg create a more equitable city? Here we go. Shake it up. Robert Falcon Olette, would you please go first? Thank you very much for having me here tonight and for listening to us. Um, equity. So, I remember when I was in the Canadian Forces, uh, at one point there was a you had a certain type of people that was in the Canadian forces and eventually they decided if we're to be representative of Canadian society and Canadian values we had to have everyone women minorities Aboriginal peoples transgender gay people homosexual uh, or uh, queer transgender and it was really important for us in order to represent Canadian values and so this is what I would like to see more of at City Hall at uh, in here in Winnipeg I know I have a colleague of mine at the University of Manitoba, and she's a fantastic young lady. She uh, has a mental disability, yet every day that she comes to work, she brings cheer and joy to the workplace. And so in order, if we're going to create a more inclusive society, we have to have more people rubbing shoulders who have differences. And so this is what I would like to see more of in the city of Winnipeg, and it's hiring. Thank you. Because, uh, Dr. Olet didn't spend all of his time, it doesn't mean you all uh, get to take <laughs> extra time. Uh, that person isn't here. And that person isn't here, so we'll just toss <laughs> those out. <laughs> Mr. Fillion, if you would go next. Okay. Good, good evening. Primarily, I would like to thank Christina Maynino for organizing this forum, and also Sean Kavanaugh for moderating this event. Equity. I would like to give my interpretation of this word with synonyms and keywords. Fair competition. Healthy communities. Decision-making. Accountability. Equal playing field. Past, present, and future. Full potential, access, opportunity. When you install barriers on a highway, it is to prevent passage. The same is with humans. We prevent the participation of individuals in a society, therefore weakening the sense of entity, weakening the unit, weakening the body. The lack of barriers unifies the city. It makes the city as one. If I think of the, local, of the local situation in Winnipeg regarding equity with the progression of the years, I see an accumulation division, especially between the north and the south. I need, as mayor, to unify the city so that the city thinks as one. In my film on YouTube that I was just posted this morning, I talk about unification, an idea that would not cost the city any money except for a prize would be the creation of a unique and novel Winnipeg handshake, used by the Winnipeggers as they meet each other to identify themselves as such. It gives a sense of unity, it gives a sense of one. 
The job of mayor is to oversee the whole operation of the city government. It is, in the most part, an administrative job. I have 30 years of experience in administration, therefore the most suited for this position. Living in a complete sense of equity is similar to the way that I was brought up on the farm. You see, some people think that I was raised too innocently. That's two minutes, you gotta wind it up. When I first moved to Winnipeg, well, let me tell you, it was quite the shock. But I learned how to deal with the detrimental ways in which people treat each other in order to reach for the top. Why I want to become mayor is to give to the citizens a little of this innocence that, is, that I still possess and to give it as a gift. Because living in innocence is a wonderful world. Equity, the whole, is greater than the sum of its parts. Thank you for your attention. And the next person is David Sanders. Hello, everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure to be home again. The last time I was in this room, was to hear the final results of the work we had done to rebuild Flora Place, which is immediately north of this site. Uh, this is now some 13 years ago, or I guess 12 years ago. Speak up, David. About 12 years ago, I had the privilege of working with the residents of Flora Place to save their community as an articling law student uh, from legal aid. And it was, to me, an example of what should be equity, and integrity in our community where people work together to be fair and just to each other, to understand what people's needs were and their preferences, and to find ways of delivering the results that they wanted. And when we started, it looked like it was going to be impossible, but in the end, they had homes with gardens, they could keep their pets, uh, and those who, who stuck with it uh, had wonderful homes, and the rents that they paid were the same as the rents they paid in the older homes. That was, I think, a success all the way around and in no small measure due to the work of the residents themselves who made it happen. Anything I can do to support that kind of community development is to me what it means to be concerned with equity. And I'll talk about integrity later. Our next speaker is Mr. Bowman. Thank you very much. Uh, it's too bad the other candidates aren't here because I have a feeling we're going to learn a lot from this audience. It's great to see everybody here tonight and thank you so much for coming. Um, this election is about a lot more than just pipes and potholes. It's about pride and confidence in our community. And we can't just talk about it, we need to be able to act on it in order to give people a real sense of pride and greater confidence in our community. I'm going to just mention three quick experiences that I've had in my life that give me a deeper appreciation for the, the word equity. Um, I'm a social media lawyer, which means I help families affected by cyberbullying. I have learned firsthand that equity and inequities affect more than just the direct person who's affected, it affects families. The Manitoba Naturalist Society, I used to be a board member there, and one of the things I learned in that experience was generational equity. We would need to make sure we're protecting the environment for the next generation, for my children and yours. And lastly, through Gany Ganichuk, I made tea, I helped out on the board there. I've learned about cultural equity. Now, in terms of uh, the question, I see one Winnipeg, not North End, South End, uh, Aboriginal, non Aboriginal business labor. We're one city, whoever sits in that seat in the office of the mayor after the next election has better, better have a good understanding of who we are as a community, as a whole. And I'll uh, look forward to talking about more specific policies before I get cut off. Thanks very much. <laughs> Last but not least, Ms. Wasselish, please. Thank you very, very much. And thanks to all the uh, members of City Watch who have made this possible tonight. Welcome to my neighborhood. I'm so glad you're all here. Good to have you again. And I want to begin by saying that all of my life in this community uh, has been either as a volunteer, or as a politician, or as a community activist, or a volunteer. And it's all been about working with you on your behalf wherever I can to achieve equality between peoples, for equality of condition 
and equality of opportunity. And that is the essence of what makes a vibrant city. It is truly about quality of life and equality of opportunity and condition. Where do we start? We start with the foundations of our city, and yes, we focus on potholes and, and pipes because, in fact, it's, it, we need to sometimes flush a toilet, and we need to be able to ride our bike to work, and we need to be able to enjoy a, a, a city that is functioning physically. But it's only, a, it's only the beginning of the whole dream of creating a city where everyone feels a part of it. And I believe equality and equity, as you've defined it, is about policies that ensure that our Aboriginal people are respected as equal partners, where people with disabilities are able to enjoy access to services and opportunities, where our youth are fully respected, where women are empowered to give the leadership that they're so able to provide for all of us, where all of us can learn to live together with respect and harmony. And I'm just going to end with a quote that has kept me strong in 30 seconds to paraphrase phrase, Danish urban planner John Gell, a great city is one where people want to go out of their homes, even in winter, where public space is a magical good and never ceases to yield pleasure, where public good prevails over private interests, where no one feels excluded. Thank you.